Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this vlog. I don't ever usually do a beginning to my vlog, but I've had a few of you go, oh, that was an abrupt beginning, an abrupt end, but I just feel like vlogs are fun to just go in and just start the vlog. This vlog is from early spring. Like I totally forgot to do a vlog about all the things I had done. So it's a smattering of many, many days, which is what my vlogs usually are. They're not any set amount of time or a day or anything. They're just kind of just random things that I do throughout my days and many days in a row. So I thought I would just pop in here and tell you, expect this to be from the spring. Okay, so Doug and I are about to go riding. We went a couple days ago and literally two days ago for the first time really for any length and it was about seven miles total. I will tell you, I was dying. <laughs> so he and I used to bike ride all the time when we were dating and I loved it. It was the time I got the skinniest and I didn't really um, diet much because I was working, so I did about 15 miles a day. So I'd love to get back up to that, but it'll be a while. Oh, oh, I hear the garage door opener going down, so Doug's ready, so I'll check in later. Well, we were gonna go, but now Doug's thing won't even pedal. Like, he can make it go that way, but he can't pedal. So now, I don't know what we're doing. Sad. Oh, it's fixed? Yay. So, so much for grand plans. Doug's gear just broke completely off. Looks like I'm gonna be picking him up in the car. I gotta ride home and go get it. Oh my gosh. I'm so tired. I feel like I'm on a rescue mission. I'm really not. I'm just taking a break. I'm underneath an overpass and sweating like a pig, as you can see. <laughs> but anyways, Doug's walking back and I'm going to go get the car. And I don't know how many miles I've gone because I can't see it right now, but it should be interesting. I'm on the last little bit and I'm walking because it's all uphill to our house. And at this point, I'm dead. I realize I'm acting as if this is Tour de France and it's the Pyrenees I'm going up, but it truly does feel like the Pyrenees to me because I'm so tired and my legs are wobbly. So again, have not ridden for 10 years with any amount of effort that is. So, okay. But I feel my butt getting smaller as I speak. Okay, maybe not the walking part, but the riding part I do. <laughs> <laughs> to the rescue! <laughs> I am finally back. I rescued my husband and now I'm relaxing in the backyard. So it's discouraging now that I want to get going and ride and like start this thing and now his bike broke. because. It's much easier for me to ride if I'm riding with him. Yes, I can ride on my own. Clearly, I just did. Um, but it's more fun to ride with my husband. So now I don't know what we're going to do. Do not have the money to buy a new bike. I'm just going to have to figure this out. He looked on Facebook Marketplace and didn't see anything. And I don't know. We really can't spend money. So... I put it on my Instagram to my friends to see if maybe somebody local has a bike we they want to get rid of. Um, but we'll see. So I might have to ride on my own. Maybe. So we planted these last weekend and we love them. We usually have them over there lined up and they weren't blooming at all when I bought them and they were in a thing that said that they were in patience. And so I trusted it. And this is all shady most of the day. Sadly, if any of you know flowers at all, you will know that that is not an impatient, that is a petunia, which needs full sun. So we moved them out here, but honestly, it doesn't get enough sun. So we have to transplant these. I'm very annoyed because, let me come around here. We also planted, it was a whole pack of like eight, or I don't know how many, this is complete shade, which impatience grow really well here. And so those have to get transplanted and these as well. Now this gets a little sun in the morning, but not very much because it gets 
shade after the sun the sun's gonna go over so yeah we have to transplant these rachel and i are going to go to target oh, i'm so pasty rachel's pasty yeah, I don't have makeup on. <laughs> she has no makeup on and i really don't either so but we're gonna go to target oh my gosh it's sitting hot in here and we need bowls like we keep running out of bowls and spoons i know it's because that we are home and we're all using all this stuff so much more but i'm like i'm so tired of not having a bowl or a spoon or a mug we need more mugs so hopefully i can find some at target oh hey <laughs> <laughs> you guys do put on the charm Okay, turn around and go. Is this for your vlog? Yes. I hear it. Woo! <laughs> coffee I got this at Target this weekend so I got this at Target I just thought it was cute I got a couple of them so I'm making my coffee I've already had one cup today but I always do one cup in a mason jar because I use it for my um, smoothie so I do it on the six ounce so it's the smallest there is a smaller one but it's too small like there's a shot there you go there's a shot one i don't use that one i use the six one so i put it in the mason jar and then i let it sit in the freezer for like an hour and sometimes i forget about it <laughs> and it's frozen solid and i use that and then i put that in my smoothie so i always make an extra cup doing that and then i'll make another cup for me Good morning, guys. I've been up since two o'clock. Hot flashes again, and just a lot on my mind. Too much on my mind. I'm going through kind of an anxiety point, and I wanted to talk about it a little bit just because I think that we all go through these times where we're a little bit more anxiety ridden. Um, I think some of mine is hormonal because I got kind of a period and you guys know I'm going through you know the menopause stages and hot flashes and things like that but um I kind of got a period and it's making me feel a little crazy and I do know that some of that is that I think the quarantine doesn't help because I'm over it I'm just so over this thing which I'm sure I'm not alone on this parenting adults is not for the faint of heart so, um, you know, when your children make choices that you're not happy with, I mean, I'm not talking choices that are like, you know, they're not bad kids, um, adults, <laughs> but they're just not the choices I would choose or choose for them. And so that's always hard and allowing them to make those choices, knowing that you don't think it's the best path for them, but they're adults and they need to make their way and just kind of figuring that whole thing out. So I think I'm saying all this because I think that's what was on my mind. Well, I know it is because I woke up and I was just like feeling the weight of the world on my shoulders. And of course I started praying and I realized I hadn't been praying enough and really giving it to God. Um, so I was like, okay, I just, I need to give this to the Lord because I know he can come alongside my kids far better than I can. All that to say, it's been a morning and I'm on my second cup of coffee because, yeah. It is Doug's and my anniversary today, 28 years. So we were gonna go bike riding and stuff, but look outside, it is wet and gross. So we are not going to do that. Let's check in on Mia. Hi, Memers. I am determined to bike ride. 
and it won't be probably today, but maybe later this week. The sun has come out. It is May 23rd and we're gonna go biking. Yay! So we're about to go and it doesn't look very pretty now. In fact, it looks pretty ugly. But this trail is so cute. It's called the Perky Omen Trail and it goes along a creek. We're switching bikes. Doug says the other bike will not stay in gear. And he just, thankfully he brought the other one because he wasn't sure. So he's gonna put that one back, switch to the other one. So thankfully we can still ride, but what a pain. <laughs> up that hill and sadly we have more to go and I gave in. I actually lasted a good amount of time I'm surprised. So I'll do the walk of shame. <laughs> it's really not because anything I'm doing is better than nothing so okay I gotta breathe now. all these bikes and we can't even ride them all because <laughs> they're all broken in some way but this bike we picked up from friends of ours who had it for free and they gave it to us the only problem is that it's a little small well a lot small for my husband still and there's just some things that weren't going to work so Doug is right now combining some of the things from this bike to put on his old bike so that maybe we can, with the two of them combined, have a bike to use. So hopefully in a couple days we'll be able to ride again. Okay, so a bunch of you saw my Instagram post about Rachel teaching me how to make a messy bun. And a bunch of you commented and said, oh, please teach us. Now I'm sure there's a million things out there teaching how to make a messy bun, but I will show you mine if I can actually recreate this. But I have a scrunchie and I have one that's got some give to it. I had one that was too tight and my hair has been curled, but you don't need that. So, okay, I put my hair up and I get it high on my head. I should go out, there we go. Okay, so. The key is having it in your hand. You put it around. This is gonna be a train wreck, I just know it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it's like that. What you don't wanna do is to put it all, like you don't wanna do your, can you see this? <laughs> like I expect you to answer me. Can you see this? <laughs> you don't want it to go all the way through. You've just made a ponytail then, so take it out. You take it. You bring it around and before you go all the way, your hair is, you twist and you bring it around it. Okay, and then you just kind of fluff it. And I'm sure that looks like a train wreck, but <laughs> it's the best messy bun I can make. Yay! Okay, so I'm trying something today called laundry stripping. That's what it's called, laundry stripping. <laughs> Sounds terrible. It is the concept, you can see it right there. So you know when you have, like your laundry feels like it's kind of almost greasy all the time, no matter how often you've washed it. So if you've used the same sheets or especially pillowcases, a lot. Sometimes the body, um, your body oils can build, especially if you're a more oily kind of person. Or um, if you use homemade laundry detergent, sometimes this can happen. Okay, let me get where the fan is. Oh, okay, that's better. Hot flash. <laughs> 
So this is the concept of getting all the extra buildup out of like your sheets or your pillowcases or um, rags, just anything that would get built up. Not normal clothing because this is very har harsh on your clothing or the fabric. And these three products put together in um, a ratio of one to one to two and let it sit for a minimum of four hours with hot water and then let it cool, it strips all the extra buildup off of your, or out of that clothing or that fabric, and then you don't have that. That's the concept. So I'm giving it a test. So I put in there one of our sheets, a set of sheets, and I put in a bunch of pillowcases because that's where I, t I get it the most because of, you know, hair products and oil from your face and it's, you know, grossness. And I put in, I think, one towel. So I'm just giving it the test. Let me show you the products I put in it. So I put it in the tub, I put one quarter cup, well, a little bit extra, because I think I filled up more water, but like a maybe half a cup of laundry booster, super washing soda. You can use regular soda if that's all you have, but this was washing soda. And same amount of borax. And then I did, I actually had to go buy laundry detergent because I make my own, but that says to use normal laundry detergent. So I went and got this. So I got the cheapest one. Oh, there's my measure. And then it's two, so it's one part this, one part this, two parts this. So then I put it all in the tub and we are on like hour three, I think. I think I have one more hour, but you can see how gross that water looks. And these were clean clothes when they went in. I, you're supposed to put them in like clean. You can't use them and then put them in. So everything in here was clean. So we'll see if it really does what it says it's gonna do. All right, guys, this worked. This was the worst of all of it. This is a pillowcase. I felt like it was almost like grease had been added to it. It was so weird. It was so gross. And it's so much better, much more of like a crisp cotton now. I'm so excited. This is the rest of them in the sheets. I am amazed. Like, all of these feel so much better. I'm definitely sold on this method. And it's not expensive. It's just time consuming. So, yay. We decided to take a drive. Hi, Rachie. Hi. <laughs> to... Um, Whoa. Whoa, we almost crashed. <laughs> to a um, town nearby that's right on the river. And it's on the border of New Jersey and Pennsylvania. And it's just a cute little town. And we're going to just see if they what's opened. I'm excited because it's a gorgeous day here. It's a Sunday. It is May 30th. Is it the 30th? Yeah. Doug? Is it? 31st? It's May 31st. So, um, yay! Coffee! <laughs> Coffee. So this is the start of the great shed renovation. You can see at the bottom of this, it was completely rotten. And so my husband has been wanting to change this out and he had a whole concept in his mind. I was skeptical, but I gotta say it actually turned out great. You can see the progress on the shed. This is our makeshift way of not buying a new shed. So Doug took off the whole bottom part. You can see the doors right in there. He painted the bottom thing there because Daddy's going to keep just like a rubbery kind of paint to keep it from rotting more because it's a little bit of rot in there, but we do not want to replace that because that's part of the bottom. So today he's gonna work on reconstructing that. And then I'm trying to figure out what color I wanna paint it. Do I want gray? Do I want white? So I decided to go riding in the morning before we watched church. And I did it without Doug. He was working on the shed and I did just under 10 miles. So I feel good. I'm still kind of red and sweaty. <laughs> and you can see I still haven't mastered the messy bun. <laughs> I don't know if I ever will. I don't think my hair is long enough, actually. I think that's why I don't have, I just don't have a lot of hair to put up there. You need like a lot of hair, but it is what it is. 
but um, it felt good to ride. I didn't stop once. So I'm thinking about doing a beginner's guide to starting bike riding for someone who is 50 plus and still overweight. Boy, that'll be a long title. <laughs> um, but tell me guys if you would be interested in that, like what kind of thing, you know, would that be something that you would be interested in learning about? Because I think I would enjoy it. I would like to um, know how to do that one before I got started. So um, comment below if that's something you'd like. All right, here's another uh, check-in with the shed. So he's gone ahead and put the board all the way down and this is obviously the new stuff. So we're gonna get a board to go right here to bridge that gap. And he has to still do the bottom and then those are the two boards. And once this is all painted, it's gonna look good. And now we're trying to figure out what kind of hinges we want that will go here. I kind of want to make it look like a nice crisp black against white. I think I want to do a white shed. So we're going to go to Home Depot or Lowe's, one of those, and see which one we want to put in there. We also have a visitor. That's Paxton. Hi, Paxton. This is Rachel's best friend's dog. Right, Rachie? Hi, Rachie. Hi. Now say hi. Come on. Say I'm hi. not here. <laughs> All right, so he's gotten more done, and now I think we're actually, Hunter, are we ready to paint? Prime and paint first. All the woodwork is done. He took off the shutters, so we're gonna paint those a different color. So on to the next step. All right, primer is going on. I just sent you guys a thing on Instagram to vote the color. So I will reveal what y'all chose at the end when you see what we paint this whole thing. Good job, honey. All right, guys, so Doug painted one coat of the light gray. It's hardly noticeable. It's better here in the shade. In the light, it's hardly noticeable. But this is in the shade a lot, so I'm not mad about it, but we'll see. So Doug painted the gray on here. He did one coat, but he did in the corner the ladder here is kind of hiding it he did two coats and we have decided we don't like it in some lights it looks purpley in some lights it light it looks blue but either way we don't like it so we've decided to go back and get pure white we're gonna do this is what we think <laughs> pure white on the whole thing then we'll have the black wrought iron hardware and Doug is going to make a new shutter and the trim is gonna be pure white. Like the whole thing is gonna be white. We'll see how we like that. So it's done. My husband finished it. I'm so excited. We decided to go with wood shutters. So he actually made those. He just bought pine from Home Depot or Lowe's, one of those and he stained them with a stain called golden oak and i love the natural look it kind of softens the whole thing because it's very white but with the black and the shutters it just gives that farmhouse look and i'm in love with it i just love it so much we put stones four stones in the front so you can walk in and then the rest is just mulch now we are looking for some kind of pots to put flowers here. And I was gonna put a flower box here, but we've decided not to. We think we're just gonna go ahead and put flowers here. I might change that later, but just flower pots. We can't put it a lot here because this door comes all the way open and we need it to come all the way open to be able to get big things in and out. So I am in love with it. I'm so excited. My husband did a very good job.